Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Yes, in fact, it is playoff time in both college football and the NFL. We'll have the college football playoff national championship game a week from tonight, Alabama, Ohio State. However, first, the NFL playoffs will kick off this upcoming weekend following the conclusion of the regular season last night with game 256. For the first time ever, a super wild card round with two triple headers before, of course, the divisional and then conference championships two weeks later, Super Bowl 55 in Tampa, Florida on CBS. So these are, in fact, my NFL playoff predictions for the 2020-2021 campaign. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Be sure, as always, to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below with that thumbs up button. Share hashtag NFL, hashtag NFL playoffs. Chat questions and comments, always greatly appreciated. As well, as mentioned, the first ever Super Wild Card round for the NFL playoffs beginning this upcoming weekend, January the 9th and 10th, respectfully. Happy New Year to everyone as well as we enter 2021. NFL expanded the playoffs from 12 to 14 teams. Now only the top seed in both AFC and NFC, respectfully, will in fact get first round buys. Those are, in fact, your defending Super Bowl 54 champion Kansas City Chiefs and the Green Bay Packers with Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers shout out to State Farm we very well could get and stay tuned a State Farm Super Bowl down in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium on February the 7th 2021 on CBS but before we get into the wild card round playoffs and then the divisional round and the AFC and NFC conference championships Pro Bowl canceled this year Pro Bowlers have been named, but game will not take place. Two weeks following the, as always, conference championship round, Super Bowl 55, once again in Tampa, early February. Now, starting, I do believe, next year, NFL has to vote on it still, I think. Uh, The playoffs will get pushed back because the regular season is going to be have an extra week added in. So, Super Bowl 56 will not take place until mid to late February, which of course would then push the off-season start date back uh, into uh, late February, early March. You know, combine for agency draft would then be pushed back as well, you would think at least. But then the regular season, as always, um, we'll see what they do with the preseason, slimming that down from four to two maybe with the addition of a regular season game or not. And then the regular season would still start um, in uh, early to mid-September, as it always does. But before we get into my playoff predictions here, I'm going to go through the wild card round, the divisional round, uh, who I think is going to make it to the AFC and NFC championships, along with the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55 already, uh, capping off NFL 101. Uh, Today is, in fact, NFL Black Monday uh, for head coaches who have uh, now been fired. As the Texans, Falcons, Lions, Jets, Jaguars, and Chargers, oh my, now all have openings following recent departures. Bill O'Brien was fired along with Dan Quinn from Houston, Atlanta, respectively. Earlier this season, Matt Patricia canned around Thanksgiving. Adam Gase fired last night by the Jets. Doug Marone and then Anthony Lynn fired today by the Jags and Chargers, respectively. Jags have the top pick in the NFL draft. Chargers took Justin Herbert last year in the first round. Uh, The Jets still have Sam Darnold as well. They'll have the number two overall pick, um, with Houston having Deshaun Watson. Atlanta still having Matt Ryan for the time being. We'll see what happens with both Ryan and Matt Stafford in Detroit. Honestly, all these openings are very intriguing. Um, We'll see uh, who potential candidates uh, could be. Uh, We've discussed it in the past, but uh, only time is going to tell, of course, uh, with um, all the roles that uh, franchises have to follow in order to hire head coach. Uh, So it's going to get pretty interesting over the next few weeks or so uh, on uh, who these teams are, in fact, going to hire to lead their franchise moving forward. Houston going to be looking for their first head coach since after 2013. Um, Atlanta, uh, along with the uh, Chargers, sort of uh, in the same time frame there. Anthony Lynn got four years. Dan Quinn was in the ATL for for quite a while. Um, I would think O'Brien and 
Dan Quinn along with Gase and Anthony Lynn. They'll all get coordinator jobs somewhere next year, whether that's at the college or NFL level. Beats me. We'll find out. Um, Matt Patricia along with Billy O'Brien probably going to go back to New England. Um, maybe, you know, even to another disciple of Bill Belichick's uh, that's elsewhere around the league. But uh, only time's going to tell. We'll, we'll get more into uh, the NFL head coaching carousel along with the NFL uh, combine for agency and draft at a later date. So uh, keep an eye out for videos, of course, on all that. But uh, yes, today is um, Black Monday, as they call it, in the National Football League. Uh, with uh, NFL teams now having openings following recent firings. But um, we'll digress on that and get into now the NFL playoff situation with the new 14-team playoff format. Uh, An addition of two teams, one seven seed in the AFC, one seven seed in the NFC. Only the top seed now will get a bye, as mentioned, will be the Kansas City Chiefs and Green Bay Packers. They will not play this weekend. They will host the lowest remaining seed next weekend during the divisional round. So about a week and a half, two weeks um, from now, a little less than that now, of course, uh, with the playoffs beginning, as mentioned, this upcoming weekend, the 9th and 10th of January 2021. We're all year long. We're going to have twice as fun in 2021 but it is playoff time uh we've got a triple header on saturday triple header on sunday cbs fox nbc and espn along with nickelodeon and freeform uh the colts and bills will kick us off saturday at one o'clock followed by Rams seahawks at 4 30 on fox bucks and skins washington football team formerly known of course as washington redskins saturday night in the nation's capital And then on Sunday, another triple header, Ravens, Titans, Bears, Saints, Browns, Steelers from the Steel City in the nightcap on Sunday Night Football. NBC will have both primetime games Saturday and Sunday night respectively with Mike Tirico and Tony Dungy along with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth on the call. Fox only the one game for now, uh, but they will have more, of course, moving forward in the divisional and then NFC Championship during conference championship sunday uh the nfc conference championship game will be at three o'clock uh during that round afc to follow at 6 37 o'clock and then two weeks from then super bowl 55 in tampa a few rematches this upcoming weekend as well with a, a few matchups with the respective teams meeting for the third time come saturday and sunday with Rams seahawks along with Brown Steelers as, of course, their divisional opponents in the AFC North and NFC West. However, the Colts and Bills will meet for the first time in Buffalo since that Snow Bowl late December in 2017. As mentioned, this game will kick us off on Saturday at 1.05 Eastern Time on CBS. Uh, In my opinion, this is sort of uh, a passing of the torch game, potentially with Phillip Rivers to... Josh Allen with Rivers potentially playing in his final NFL game if, in fact, he is going to finally retire. Um, Both teams, uh, in my opinion, very well-rounded and balanced. However, with Buffalo playing at home and uh, a few of these cities now going to allow fans beginning this upcoming weekend for the wildcard round, Bills Mafia back at a limited capacity strength, Um, I do believe the Buffalo Bills will win their first home playoff game since 1995 over the Indianapolis Colts to survive in advance come playoff time here in the NFL, uh, along with the college football playoff. Uh, As we saw on New Year's with Alabama beating Notre Dame, Ohio State beating Clemson, the Crimson Tide and Buckeyes will now meet a week from tonight. Bills then with the win over the Colts would advance to the divisional round as mentioned with the Chiefs and Packers on buys they'll then host a divisional round playoff game with the lowest remaining seeds coming out of the wild card round of course however the remaining seeds uh, will meet then with the highest seed hosting so Buffalo as your two seed as we'll run down uh, the playoff pitcher here as a few teams of course got uh, left out 
Um, even with being in the hunt the past few weeks, the Chiefs are your top seed in the AFC. They have a first round bye, followed by the Bills at two and the Pittsburgh Steelers at three. Titans are four, Ravens five, Browns six, Colts snuck in at seven. The Chiefs run a bye, so that's two, seven, three, six, four, five. So our AFC matchups are Buffalo and Indy, followed by Pittsburgh and Cleveland in a third time rematch this year. Cleveland looking to defeat the Steelers for the first time ever in the playoffs. We'll get more into that game in a second. But Bills, Colts, Steelers, Browns, and then Titans, Ravens is your 4-5 in the AFC. NFC side of things, Packers on a bye. And then the Saints are your 2, Seahawks 3, the Washington football team, formerly known, of course, as Washington Redskins, as your 4 seed, winning the NFC East at 7-9. and nine. Bucks at five, Rams at six, and then the Chicago Bears snuck in. Cardinals lost on the road to the Rams, so even with the Bears' loss, the Bears get in at seven. So Packers on a buy at one. Saints host the seven-seeded Chicago Bears. That's your two seven. Seahawks, Rams three six, and then your four five in the NFC is Washington hosting Tampa Bay. But in the first game, I have Buffalo defeating Indy. Um, I, I just feel like Buffalo with the way they've been playing uh, from start to finish. Yeah, every team stumbled along the way. No one finished undefeated this season. Um, Steelers were the last remaining unbeaten at 11-0 before losing about a month or so ago now uh, against the Washington football team and then lost three straight, of course, against the Bills and Bengals uh, before uh, rounding out the season with a home win against the Colts and then losing to the Browns yesterday, a team in which they'll host uh, for the second time this season next Sunday night, and we'll get more into that, as mentioned, shortly. But um, Josh Allen, Phillip Rivers, the committee Buffalo has it running back. Jonathan Taylor ran for 250 yesterday, but was overshadowed by Derrick Henry, who also ran for 250-plus capped off his 2020 season with 2,000 rushing yards, so congrats to him. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he'll win MVP. He could be the best non-quarterback to be an MVP candidate right now, but it's going to either go to Rodgers or Mahomes. I'll get more into that later as well. Uh, But with both teams being, you know, balanced as hell, um, block up front, run the ball down your throat, play good defense, you know, rely on your special teams when needed, but open up the play action. And with all the weapons Rivers and Allen have, uh, I just feel Buffalo, especially with, uh, I do believe they're getting around five to 8,000 fans back in the stands for the first time all season long um, up in Orchard Park. Buffalo is going to come out top and win their first home playoff game in a uh, quarter of a century. They uh, went to Houston last year and lost in the wildcard round. Should have won that game, but Texans came back and won before they, of course, blew their lead against the Chiefs the following week and lost to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, who then, a week later, came from behind once again and beat the Titans and then did the same thing in the Super Bowl against 49ers and won Super Bowl 54. Chiefs-Packers, once again, on a bye this weekend. And with that being said, before I move on even further, before the Rams-Seahawks game kicks off Saturday at 440 Eastern Time, on Fox, I'd assume Joe Buck, Troy Eggman, along with Aaron Andrews and Christina Pink, will in fact be on the call for the third time with this third matchup this season with L.A. and Seattle. I did, in fact, if you go back and look, my NFL Super Bowl prediction preseason was, in fact, Kansas City and Seattle. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to stand by that, but stay tuned. Things, of course, could change from now until the end of this recording. So thank you for tuning in once again and listening. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, little notify bell next to it as well. But Rams, Seahawks, big question with this game as the teams split the regular season series with home teams victorious. Will Jared Goff play? Got injured against Seattle on the road just a short time ago. Did not play this past week. However, the Rams beat the Cardinals, eliminated them from playoff contention. Bears got in. They go to New Orleans. That game's on Sunday. But will Jared Goff play? Whether he does or doesn't, I right now honestly don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Seattle's tough to beat uh, at home. However, with the one all-time playoff meeting versus one another in NFL history, the Rams 
beat the Seahawks in Seattle back in 2005 in the wild card round as well. But, however, that was then. This is now. Give me the Seahawks along with the Buffalo Bills before Bucks Washington kicks off Saturday night for the first of the two day NFL wild card round triple header this upcoming weekend. So, Bills Seahawks currently my wild card picks. Bucks Skins, Washington football team, of course, formerly known as the Washington Redskins. They changed their name this past summer before the season started. They finished a 7 and 9 with first year head coach Ron Rivera. Losing record, yes. However, they won the NFC East. They are the first team since Seattle and Carolina to do so in the past 10 years that won their division with a below 500 record. The last two times, though, since Seattle and Carolina did so in the past decade, that a below 500 division winner made the playoffs. Both the Seahawks and Panthers won during wild card round weekend. Third time, though, in my opinion, won't be a charm. Bucks win. I just feel even with as good as Washington's defense is, especially their defensive line, I mean, Chase Young, Kerrigan, your Alabama trio, Tampa's defense on the flip side is as good, if not better, okay? Then with Brady and all the weapons on offense that Tampa Bay has versus Alex Smith and the few targets that he has on Washington's offense, Tampa, you would think, but this is why the games play. It's not side on paper, side on the field. Tampa should route Washington on the road Saturday night. However, the Bucks haven't won a playoff game since they won Super Bowl 37 against the Oakland Raiders back in 2003. So, with all that being said, I I still think Tampa is the better team, and I think the Bucks are going to advance. I mean, you have Tom Brady, for God's sakes, playing quarterback for you. Now, Mike Evans did get hurt yesterday. From what I've heard, he's day-to-day. Hyper extended his knee. But, with Brady at quarterback, they still have their trio in the backfield with Jones, Fournette, and McCoy. Plethora of wide receivers. Mike Evans, Antonio Brown stepped up as of late after they signed him. Chris Godwin as well. Always gets the short end of the stick. Tight ends with Gronk and Bray. Just imagine they still had O.J. Howard, for God's sakes, who went down early this season with an Achilles injury. This season in the NFL, we saw way too many injuries, way too many missed kicks. But um, along with way too many uh, missed or even bad calls from the officials, if it's a penalty, call it. If it's not, don't let them play. But we'll move on. Bucks, I think, win... Um, Way too many playmakers uh, on uh, their offense compared to Washington's. Uh, so Bruce Arians gets the better of Ron Rivera. But, you know, history on Washington's side right now. Uh, as mentioned, the past two times since 2010 that a below 500 uh, division winner made the playoffs were both Seattle and Carolina. And Ron Rivera was the head coach of the, that Panther squad. They both won during the wildcard round. So, um, you know, like I said, third time, I don't believe right now, Unless come end of week, you know, some of these teams have COVID issues and are down more players than currently expected right now. Okay, maybe at that point change pick. But no, Tampa will still find a way to win on the road um, and advance to the divisional round winning their first playoff game in almost 20 years as they snapped their playoff drought along with the Cleveland Browns the Jets now hold the longest dating back to 2010 so um, not as of course long as previous with 2002 and then 2003 um, or even 2007 2008 for some teams but um, as we take a look back of course in the history books you got to look ahead move towards the future that's what some of these teams are now going to be doing with New head coaching uh, jobs that have just now opened up, but Bills, Seahawks, Bucks winners on Saturday. Those currently right now, uh, as well, are the current favorites to win. So, two home teams, a road win for Tampa. We'll see where they go then in the divisional round, depending, of course, on what happens on 
Sunday because we also have a, another triple header with Baltimore, Tennessee. That's a rematch. Bears, Saints. That's a rematch. Brown Steelers. That's a rematch for the third time. So, other than Colts, Bills, and Bucks, Skins, all four other games are in fact rematches from earlier this season. With Rams, Seahawks, as mentioned, splitting, as did the Browns and the Steelers. The Titans went to Baltimore, won in overtime. Saints went to Chicago and won in overtime as well. However, with Ravens, Titans, Tennessee went to Baltimore last year in the playoffs as well and also shut out Lamar Jackson and Baltimore advancing to the AFC Championship game, falling a win against both New England and Baltimore then before losing with the Chiefs. Kansas City beat San Fran in the Super Bowl. The Ravens this time on the road, hot streak to close out the season, making the playoffs by the skin of their ass. Run, 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 run. You're going to see a lot of rushing in this game. This will be Sunday at 1.05 Eastern Time on both ABC and ESPN, respectively. Ravens-Titans from Music City, USA, a week 11 rematch. It was actually bonus coverage for myself during a live reaction play-by-play stream live right here on YouTube, where, in fact, I'll have live reactions play-by-play live right here on YouTube all NFL playoff season long, so be sure to tune back in. Hit that red subscribe button, little notify bell next to it as well if you haven't done so already. Derrick Henry on the opening overtime drive for the Tennessee Titans. Touchdown run. Ravens didn't even get a chance to possess the ball. Titans won 30-24. Expect another close game. Down to the wire type. What defense bends but doesn't break. Right now I'm going to pick Baltimore, but this is a coin flip. So, coin flip, toss up, however you want to put it. Right now, would not be shocked, wouldn't be surprised with whoever does in fact win this game and advances to the divisional round. However, I'm going to take Baltimore on the road. The road team's won the past two matchups. Third time's a charm here maybe uh, with the road team winning once again. So, as much as I don't want to pick the Ravens being a Steeler fan... Give me the Ravens over the Titans. But honestly, run, 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 run. Defense bends but doesn't break type of ball game. Baltimore, hell, they ran for 400 plus yesterday. But Derrick Henry had half of that by himself for God's sakes. So something's got to give. And that, that's why this game's a coin flip toss-up type. Um, so keep an eye out for the defenses, um, especially with all the running. Who's going to get tired first? Whoever doesn't. They'll come out on top. Give me the Ravens to advance to the divisional round. Um, however, I'm not going to be shocked, honestly, either, if both with the uh, winning streaks, the Bills, Ravens, hell, even the Saints potentially losing at home again in the wild card round for the second straight year against the NFC North squad, you know, potentially being upset. You know, we're probably going to have at least one, maybe two this weekend. And we'll get more into my picks for the wild card round here in a second, but. So far with these four games, the three on Saturday and the one early Sunday with Baltimore and Tennessee, my picks are Bills, Seahawks, Bucks, and Ravens, which are right now currently your favorites to win. Saints hosting the Bears. Week 8 rematch that New Orleans won on the road in overtime as well, 26-23 with a game-winning field goal. I think the Saints win again. I think this game's uh, probably going to, as it is on paper, Drew Brees coming back a few weeks back. Still have Taysom Hill, who is their Swiss Army knife. Alvin Kamara did not play yesterday. Test positive for COVID-19. He should be back. Uh, if not, hopefully Latavius Murray's back, uh, as they didn't have a single running back yesterday. However, still beat the Panthers pretty bad. Big Mike Thomas should be back as well, hopefully, for New Orleans. This game, out of any on paper and on the field, potentially, I think it's going to be a blowout. I don't think Chicago really has a chance, even though, um, you know, it was only a three-point win earlier this season. Um, you know, that was Nick Foles then down to Mitch the Bitch Trubisky. You know, he's played good. Who knows if they'll re-sign him or not. Matt Nagy, for the time being, going to keep his job because they made the playoffs by the skin of their ass as well. Saints at home, 
they don't lose for the second straight year in the wild card round at home. Give me New Orleans over the Bears. And then the final wild card round matchup. It'll be Sunday Night Football, 8.15 Eastern Time on NBC. Live reactions, play to play. Live right here on YouTube. All wild card round, all divisional round, AFC and NFC Conference Championships, along with Super Bowl 55. All live right here on YouTube. NFL live reactions, play to play. Along with Cultural Playoff National Championship game next Monday night as well with Alabama and Ohio State. So be sure to tune in. Hit that red subscribe button if you haven't done so already. But Browns, Steelers. Here we go, Steelers. Black and Gold's climb to the stairway to seven begins on Sunday night versus Cleveland Browns, who they just lost to yesterday, 24 to 22. But the Browns are in the playoffs for the first time since 2002, snapping the longest NFL playoff drought. Team split the regular season series. Pittsburgh won 38-7 back in mid to late October. Two-point victory for the Browns yesterday. But if the Steelers can almost beat Cleveland, losing by two yesterday, as mentioned, with backups, Mason Rudolph throwing for 300-plus, Steelers going to get big Ben Roethlisberger back next week. He was out resting, had the week off, as did a few other starters for the Pittsburgh Steelers on both offense and defense, respectively. You would think, surely, the Steelers should beat the Browns at home once again, a place Cleveland has not won since 2003. A game after they last were in the playoffs in the 2002 campaign, January of 03, losing against, guess who, on the road, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, like I just said, you would think, surely, if Pittsburgh can almost beat Cleveland with backups, they should be able to win at home with everyone back at full strength. Uh, but Pittsburgh, however, they need to find a strong running game and be able to stop the Browns' running game with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt in order to win and then advance to, if Buffalo wins, Pittsburgh's going back to upstate western New York if Pittsburgh also wins. That'll be your one AFC divisional matchup as, of course, then the other, in my eyes, would be the Ravens going to Kansas City. A Monday night rematch from earlier this year with Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. But with Cleveland being in the playoffs for the first time in almost 20 years, you know, good for them, good for the city. Shout out to the fans. Uh, Along with the Buffalo Bills, with Bills Mafia, Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, Packers, Seahawks with the 12th man, um list goes on and on and on. Don't want to forget anybody and include them out, but fan bases in the NFL, um, more so than not right now with uh, a few teams vying for their first playoff win or even in the playoffs for the first time forever, shout out to those fan bases. I I, I understand you're hurt. Um, however, I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I've seen Black and Gold win a few. So, uh Bills win. Browns don't. I think Pittsburgh picks the win at home. Sun of night. And as mentioned, a few teams with the respective cities and states going to allow fans once again. So the Steel City will have some uh, Steeler Nation in attendance. Sun of night. But the Browns winning yesterday at home by two. How much of a hangover are they going to have next week, honestly? Even though... You know, they've said, okay, we still got work to do. We know we're in the playoffs now. We got to go back to Pittsburgh, a place we haven't won since last time, a game after we are in the playoffs. And, yeah, kudos to them, credit. You know, Mayfield's a damn good quarterback. They got a strong running game with with Chubb and and Hunt. Um, I think OBJ's gone at the season's end. I don't think they need him. I don't know who's going to want him, though, either. Uh, but for Pittsburgh, in order to win, they have to find a running game with James Conner, Benny Snell, Anthony Tony McFarlane, Jalen Samuels, um, maybe even bring in Josh Dobbs um, for a little bit as well. I doubt they dress three quarterbacks, so uh, he made some good plays yesterday um, as a dual threat QB. Rudolph threw for over 300, and you know there was no incident with Miles Garrett or Mason Rudolph this go around, but. Um, of course, that's all in the past. We're just going to look ahead and move forward. 
I think it's going to be tough for Cleveland to to come into Pittsburgh and and win. But they're riding high. They got a lot of momentum. Can they put it all together and beat Pittsburgh for the first time ever in the playoffs? Third all time meeting. Big Ben's twenty three two and one against the Brownies all time in his career. The Ohio native himself played at Miami Ohio up until just recently. Uh, had the most wins all time by a starting quarterback at First Energy Stadium. That's been opened for a little over two decades now. And the Browns are going back to the playoffs for only the second time since, and they haven't even got the chance to play a home playoff game. But even if they win, they probably won't unless it's Colts, Browns, and the AFC title game because they are, in fact, your six and seven seeds because whoever's the highest remaining seed come conference title games is, in fact, going to host the championship before Super Bowl 55. So just how it works. Um, good to see the NFL finally, you know, in the end, though, added into the playoffs, addition of the seventh wild card. So, yeah, it sucks if you're a two seed. Normally, you get a first round bye. No longer, you got to host a wild card game against the seven seed. You know, could we see an upset with, you know, Indian Buffalo or even Chicago New Orleans? Yes, but I highly doubt it. Um, if there was going to be an upset, um, I mean, it would probably technically, with the way the Steelers uh, have played this season, you know, as mentioned, starting out 11 and 0, lost three straight, uh, sort of got back on their feet, but they have to find a goddamn running game. They have not been consistent from start to finish this season. Um, I would put that. If Cleveland, you know, would beat Pittsburgh, I think a lot of people would, honestly. Um, if that were to be the outcome with Cleveland beating the Steelers next Sunday night, that would be the upset of the weekend. But we start off walk right around weekend with Colts Bills Saturday at 1, and then we're going to go the whole way to Sunday night. So two days of triple headers. Surviving in advance. It's going to be a super wild card Saturday and Sunday. CBS, Fox, NBC, and ESPN before the divisional round that I'll get into now next right now. So before I move on, though, thank you for your continued support and thank you for listening right now. Like, follow, and subscribe. Links in the description below. Hit that thumbs up button. Share. Keep those chat questions and comments rolling. But give me Buffalo. Give me Seattle. Give me Tampa Bay, Baltimore, New Orleans, and Pittsburgh all to win during wild card round weekend so all six current favorites to win those are my picks at that point okay with those winners uh with then kansas city and green bay having to return following their off week during the wild card round they'll host the lowest remaining seeds so with what i have okay with kansas city being your one They'd host Baltimore if Baltimore beats Tennessee. If Cleveland beats Pittsburgh, you know, it'll be the Browns then at that point, or even the Colts. Um, but AFC Divisional Round, as there's a few different matchups moving forward, but uh, these are our six that we're getting this weekend, and then we'll, of course, see what the schedule is the following weekend. I know there'll be two Saturday, two Sunday before the two the following Sunday for the conference title games and then Pro Bowl not happening and then one final NFL game in a season unlike any other, you know, sitting here right now recording this nine, ten months ago, we didn't even know if we were going to have a season for God's sakes, but here we are, you know, we should be uh, thankful and grateful that we made it through 17 weeks that absolutely just flew by. Um, that's what, another thing I can't believe right now honestly that I am sitting here right now and and recording this with, with the season you know flying by by the edge of our seats and hey it's playoff time now so we'll move on and you know win or go home survive in advance you win you advance move on to the next round you lose you're done you're into your offseason program combine for agency draft on the next year but AFC divisional round Pittsburgh Buffalo Baltimore, Kansas City, both rematches as well from earlier this season. 
one from just last month on a Sunday night in upstate Western New York and Orchard Park with the Bills defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then Baltimore, Kansas City, Ravens, Chiefs in KC this go around as they played in Baltimore late September on a Monday night in which Kansas City won. So give me both home teams to win those games with Buffalo advancing to take on Kansas City in the AFC championship game. Would, of course, like the Steelers to win, get to the AFC title game, potentially get to the Super Bowl. Now, if the Steelers can get past Cleveland with a, a strong running game, good defense, no turnovers, do the same against the Bills unlike last time, then, okay, then at that point, maybe they'll have a, a shot of winning and advancing the AFC championship game. But the games, of course, from now until then still have to be played because it's as always, isn't a side on paper, it's a side on the field. We can talk and bullshit all we want about it, but until the games are played, um, you know, we're not going to know, of course, who comes out on top. But Steelers, Bills, Ravens, Chiefs in the divisional round, and then Buffalo, Kansas City in a, well, it's supposed to be Thursday night football game, mid-October, postponed because of COVID with all the scheduling conflicts this season in the NFL to a early... Monday night game with a doubleheader to follow. That was, I do believe, Cardinals-Cowboys, in which Arizona just steamrolled Dallas uh, on the road. But with what I have right now, following the wall card round and then into the division round on the AFC side of things, we'll get in the NFC in a second. Steelers, Bills, Ravens, Chiefs, Bills would then have to go to Kansas City 2-1 with Kansas City hosting the AFC championship game. Now, on to the NFC side of things. With Seattle and New Orleans, along with Tampa winning, the Seahawks would go to New Orleans. The Bucks would go to Green Bay. Seattle and New Orleans did not play this year. Tampa and Green Bay, however, they did. However, it was down in Tampa Bay in which the Bucks absolutely blew out Rodgers and the Pack. Um... That really, even with Kansas City finishing in 14 and 2, Green Bay at 13 and 3, your top seeds, that was Green Bay's worst game of the season. However, with them having the number one overall seed, as Kansas City does as well in the AFC, the road to the Super Bowl in both conferences goes through Arrowhead and Lambeau Field. Seahawks, I think, would go to New Orleans and beat Drew Brees and the Saints. And then the Packers, because they're playing at home in the cold. Brady's used to playing in the cold, though, up in Foxborough with the New England Patriots. First year in New, uh, Tampa Bay, of course, following his departure from New England. But we'd finally get in the playoffs Brady and Rodgers with the Packers, I do think, winning. Which then, for the, as I have in the AFC, Bills Chiefs, give me the Seahawks and Packers. In the NFC Championship game. And as mentioned earlier, before I, even after I started there a little bit, but before the Rams Seahawks pick, because the Chiefs are on a bye, get it in when you can fit it in, my preseason Super Bowl 55 prediction. Go back and check it out. It's right here on the channel. Mark my words. You're not going to regret it. Be sure to subscribe. I predicted Chiefs Seahawks for Super Bowl 55 in Tampa. Now, last year, I predicted. Chiefs Saints and then New Orleans lost in the wild card round. San Fran had Kansas City right where they wanted them at, and then Mahomes with his Mahomes magic, Kansas City came out on top. Trying to become the first NFL franchise since the Super Bowl 38 and 39 champion, New England Patriots, to win back to back Super Bowls. And I think Kansas City's going to get there. All right, I think they'd beat Buffalo again. But with my current prediction of both AFC and NFC Championship games being rematches, since the last loss, both Buffalo and Green Bay have looked unstoppable, as they sort of did before that loss and then even after. More so for Green Bay than not versus the Bills. But Bills, Chiefs, Seahawks, Packers... I do believe will be your AFC and NFC championship games, respectively. If we do finally get 
Brady and Rodgers in the playoffs with the Bucks and Pack. Expect a shootout, especially with all the weapons, but with it going to be mid-January, Lambeau Field in the cold, down the wire, as I do believe Baltimore and Tennessee will be on Sunday. What defense bends but doesn't break? Honestly, pretty even down the middle, split. I mean, you would probably, on paper, give the advantage for defensively, at least, to Tampa Bay, I would think. But Green Bay playing at home, you know, going back since they lost to Tampa Bay, as Buffalo uh, did to Kansas City as well, flip-flop the sites for the games. Green Bay in advantage. Buffalo at home against Pittsburgh, advantage, especially with fans. But the Bills get to Kansas City before losing. Okay? I think the Chiefs are going back to the Super Bowl. Seahawks beat the Saints. Packers find a way to beat Brady and the Bucks. You go back to that Bills-Chiefs game. Run, 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 run in the rain on a Monday night rescheduled from the previous Thursday because of COVID, as mentioned. The Chiefs rushing attack that game. That was right before they signed Le'Veon Bell as well. Okay? Is Clyde Edwards-Alaire going to be healthy in order to come back and potentially play in the playoffs for the Kansas City Chiefs is a big question. If they can get their two-headed backfield back with Clyde and Bell, along with all the weapons that Mahomes has to throw to with Hill and Hardman and Travis Kelsey breaking records, Kansas City's defense is as good as Buffalo's. This time of year, you have to be able to run the football and play good defense in order to win, especially on the road and potentially in the cold depending on, of course, what team you're on and then who the hell you're playing. It just depends on the situation. But with how the games change, spread you out, run to throw, throw to run, however you want to put it, both works. And even with, okay, as I always like to say, what defense is going to bend but doesn't break, all anybody ever remembers is if you won or lost. And with all the weapons all these teams have nowadays... You'd hope, at least, you'd think that because, of course, namesake of the game is winning, that you're going to try to go out and put up as many points on the scoreboard as you possibly can because it's not golf. It's not the lowest score wins a football game. It's whoever has the most points, 31 to 30, 56 to 50, 6 to 4, okay? Doesn't matter. If you have more points than your opponent, you're going to come out on top. But old school in me, you have to block up front, run the ball, open up the play action. You got to have a few plays up your sleeve as well, but then play good, reliable defense and rely on your special teams with hopefully your kicker won't be missing kicks. You know, he can knock down some extra points and field goals for you, and then your punter can pin your opponent deep inside the 10, 15, 20-yard line. So... Um, with all that being said, going back to is Clyde Edwards Alaire going to be healthy enough to come back and play for the Chiefs in the playoffs? Mahomes got two weeks off. They don't play yesterday. They arrested him because they clinched the number one seed last week. First round by then. So who knows if he'll be rusted or not? Probably not. But Clyde hasn't played, and especially now with the injury, since he got hurt against the Saints right before Christmas. So, with him being out a few games, they still have Bell. Mahomes still making plays. I just feel like Kansas City's more talented than Buffalo, especially playing at home. I mean, hell, if they can go on the road and beat them, you would think they'd be able to beat them at their own place, especially in a must-win game to get the Super Bowl because if you lose, you're done. Your season's over with. Survive in advance. Playoff time. But give me the Chiefs to win the AFC for the second time in the last three years. Honestly, it should be three years straight. They should have beat New England in overtime two years ago, but did not. Chiefs beat the Bills, but what a game that's going to be. Josh Allen and Mahomes again. We'll see if weather is going to be a factor, as it was last time or not. But Kansas City just more talented, more powerful, playing at home. Chiefs get the win. And then with the NFL game, Okay, for my predictions at least, Seahawks-Packers. It'll be the second straight playoff meeting with these two squads from Lambeau Field as they met last year with Green Bay coming out on top by a few. Potentially the fourth overall in the playoffs with 
a Super Bowl berth on the line. However, the Seahawks have never beaten Green Bay on the road in the playoffs. Their only win was a 2014 NFC title game, which was at home in overtime before the Seahawks did not give Marshawn Lynch the ball at the one-yard line and lost New England Patriots in Super Bowl 49. So Seahawks, Packers, Green Bay at home. I, I think it's going to be one versus one with the Chiefs and Packers. Home field going to come into play now uh, with some fans returning to the stands. Give me Kansas City. Give me Green Bay to advance Super Bowl 55 come February the 7th, 2021. Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, otherwise known as the State Farm Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. Now, both quarterbacks right now uh, arguably are your two MVP favorites. I think Rodgers is going to win MVP. Okay, I think a lot of people have been thinking that now as of late, especially with Mahomes not playing yesterday. Rodgers now with, I do believe, 46, 48 passing touchdowns on the season uh, versus uh, five, six interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, along with Mahomes in the, in the same range, but even with the one less victory Green Bay has compared to Kansas City, both quarterbacks have showed out. Both quarterbacks, I, I think, are going to get their teams to the Super Bowl. So we'll get Mahomes, Rodgers, Chiefs, Packers. But if Rodgers wins the MVP, nine times out of ten, if you win MVP and you're in the Super Bowl, you lose the Lombardi. Whoever you're playing wins. If Mahomes then, of course, will win MVP, you know, roles are reversed, vice versa. So with that being said, for the State Farm Super Bowl, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to win MVP. I do. Okay. Patrick Mahomes, he will lead his Kansas City Chiefs back to the promised land once again for the second straight year, and the Chiefs will win back-to-back Super Bowls, becoming, as mentioned just a little bit ago, the first franchise to do so since New England Patriots won back-to-back Lombardis in Super Bowl 38 and 39 against the Panthers and Eagles. So those are, in fact, my NFL playoff Predictions for the wildcard divisional AFC and NFC Conference Championships, along with the Super Bowl that will be played on February the 7th, 2021. A little over a month away from now, come Thursday, as this is being recorded the day following the end of the NFL regular season, this January the 4th, 2021, as it, as mentioned earlier, is... NFL Black Monday have those few openings now around the league with head coaching vacancies. We'll see what happens there. But it's playoff time. Playoff football, you got to this point for a reason. You won as many games um, as you did. Um, as um, we did have a, a 10 and 6 Dolphin team miss out as they ended up being the Eight seed. However, they're going to have a, a few first-round picks. Uh, going to try to build around to Tungalavoa down South Beach. Miami was the home Super Bowl last year, hosting College Football Playoff National Championship game next Monday night. Going to go up the road to Tampa. First Super Bowl since 43 that the city will host. But in the AFC, you have a 14-2, and 13-3, and 12-4 and and squad with Kansas City, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh, respectively. And then four 11 and 5 teams Tennessee, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Indy. For the most part, same goes on the NFC side of things 13 and 3 Pack, 12 and 4 Saints, 12 and 4 Seahawks, and then 11 and 5, 10 and 6, and 8 and 8, with a 7 and 9 Washington football team making the playoffs as well. But as mentioned, those were, these are, in fact, my NFL playoff predictions from the wildcard round that's beginning this upcoming weekend hopefully we'll tune in for live reactions play by play all the way Super Bowl 55 in which I see the Kansas City Chiefs and Green Bay Packers meeting in a Super Bowl 1 rematch on February the 7th 2021 Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Florida thank you for listening as always, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media if you haven't done so already. Links in the description below. Thumbs up button. Share hashtag NFL, hashtag NFL playoffs. And uh, hopefully you'll tune in beginning this upcoming weekend with the wildcard round for live reactions, play by play, live right here on YouTube. 
of the 2020-2021 NFL playoffs. That will continue for live reactions play play for myself, your host, and Psychopedia Sports, all postseason long from now until Super Bowl 55, in which, as mentioned, I see Kansas City and Green Bay meeting. It was a matchup on a Sunday night last year. However, Mahomes was injured the week prior, did not play, so we didn't get to see Mahomes and Rodgers. We have still yet to see Mahomes and Rodgers. So, um, you know, we could we could get that for the first time ever um, about a month from now, as mentioned. But I see the Kansas City Chiefs coming out on top and winning back-to-back Super Bowls, becoming the first to do so since the New England Patriots almost two decades ago. Thank you for listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. As always, links in the description below. Let me know as well who you have winning in the NFL playoffs and advancing Super 55, along with who will be hoisting the Lombardi Trophy high in the air to close out this COVID season for the National Football League. Give me the Chiefs over the Packers.